Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Meller Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can use a MIDI controller to control M Super Looper. So I have a Behringer FCB1010, and to be honest, it's a little bit hard for me to actually set that up itself, so the hardware was hard for me to set up. But once I had that set up, hooking it up to M Super Looper was fairly easy, so I'll show you how you can do that uh, here in this video. So let's get started. So first thing I want to do is let's just go to some of the settings here and set this up. Uh, I'm going to turn follow host playback off because uh, let's just do this, you know, freestyle. Um, other thing I want to do is now turn auto start off. And the reason is if I don't have that, if I hit like a note on my guitar, it'll start playing uh, based on this threshold. So if we put it all the way up, it's just off. So it won't start doing that. Um, anything else? Let's turn all loops the same length off. So people were asking me about this. You actually can do loops of different lengths, but they have to be multiples of the same loop. So if the first loop is two seconds, the next one has to be two seconds or four seconds or six seconds or eight seconds, etc. So, uh, there you go. That's the scoop on that. Um, trying to think, I think everything else is okay for now. I might want to do immediate track switch. So that way when I hit next, it immediately goes to the next one and not when the loop ends. So now that we have that out of the way, let's get into setting it up uh, to a MIDI controller. So the first thing we're going to need is a extra track. And the reason is we need MIDI input into it. So on this track, I have audio input because I'm going to be recording something, but uh, I need another MIDI input. So let's use a se separate track and let's just have the input to this is our MIDI controller here. And then let's move this over here like that. So now you see MIDI is going in there. And we can arm it too. Now from here to have everything set up, we're going to go into MIDI at the top here. Now we have all these set up here, but lots of these are set up to use uh, MIDI CC controllers. And I really don't want to use like a mod wheel to turn on my recording. So you can do that and you can change the main controllers if you're using like, for example, some type of MIDI controller that uses MIDI CCs, but I'm going to use notes because I think that's a little bit easier. So I'm just going to erase all of these. I know this seems a little bit annoying, but actually you only have to do this once. Once you set this up, you can just save it as a preset and it's easy to do every single time. So that way, if you, uh, you know, don't want to spend a bunch of time doing this every time, you just do it once, save it as a preset. And you can, and the great thing about that is if you have multiple MIDI controllers, you can do it with uh, different ones too. So next let's go into notes. So that's what we want to use. So I'm going to click enable first. Now we have to decide what do we want to actually use? So we could, you know, use MIDI learn and click this, but uh, actually I'll just go in here. First one is record. That seems easy enough. Now you see over here, in the values, what we want to do is change this to a switch. The switch means that when I click it, it'll turn on. And then when I click it again, it'll turn off. So now that we have that, just hit learn. And then we're going to hit the note or the button on our MIDI controller like this. Okay, so mine plays notes zero. It's a C negative one, I guess. So that's going to turn on the record. Uh, I can test it out just to make sure it's working. I'll just hit the button on my controller. You see it started recording. Good. So that's what we want. Uh, next, let's actually hook this up to the next button. So there's a few ways we could do this. So instead of using the record in the next button, I could just go into here and use track and use select and record. And that way, if I had, let's say four buttons on my controllers, each button would just turn on the track and start recording. But I actually want to use the next button here, and that's just going to move us to the next track. So I'll have to hit two buttons, but for me, that's easier and makes more sense. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, except in this time, I'm not going to use switch. I'm going to use on and off. So that's just going to hit it like twice. It's going to hit the button and then it's going to release the button. So I'm going to do the same thing. Hit MIDI learn. Okay. So you see here I have a different button. I'll do the same thing with the next one. Make sure it's to on and off. Uh, actually change this. I want this to do previous here. Okay. So that'll make it go instead of down to the next track, it'll go to the previous track. Hit learn, hit the next button. Okay. Uh, next one, let's do undo. 
So undo, for those that don't know, when you do an overdub and you think like, I like what I recorded the first time, but the overdub was no good, undo will allow you to erase the overdub and try it again immediately. So that one's useful. I use that sometimes. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Switch it to on and off. Choose another button. Okay. And then last one, I'm just going to use clear track. So that way, if I just screw everything up, I can just you know, clear it all out. So make sure this is on and off. Click learn here. Next button. There we go. And of course, we could add more stuff here, but uh, you can add as much as you want. Uh, you could add some other things to the controllers too, if you wanted to control, like, let's say, the wet volume or something with your foot pedal. I don't know. But after you've done all that, save it as a preset. So that way, next time, I can just click on this and I don't have to do all this again. And let's test it to make sure all the stuff with the next button is working. Okay, so I'm hitting the buttons. Everything seems to be working. And so I'll be able to control most of the stuff with that. So uh, let's get started. I'll try to play something. And actually, instead of doing everything by hand, I'll have to go in here and I'm going to mess with some of the FX and settings to try to make this sound like a maybe old Sean Lane track when he was doing the trio stuff and he'd use the looper. So uh, let's get started. Let me make sure my guitar sound is okay. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so that's enough of me playing around with that, but you get the idea of some of the things you can do with this. So I had these going backwards. You see they have them at a uh, few different lengths here. And so you get the basic idea of how to do that and how you can move this and uh, move around here just by using your feet. And also, I'm not sure if I explained this, but the next button, if you get to the end and you're like, okay, like I wish I had another track while you're playing. If you just hit the next button one more time like this, it adds another track for you, so you won't run out of tracks unless you're at 16, then you probably will. But uh, besides that, you know, you can get some extra. So if you have like some inspiration while you're playing, you can just do that. So by adding the effects there, I that one actually required me to use my hands. But uh, it's really useful for me because now I can actually play something and then I can start it in the middle. So you can hear like when I started the beginning with just that uh, harmonic. I got rid of the attack because I can start right in the middle of while I'm playing. So that's a good point of using a controller. So you can do much more complicated things and maybe I'll show those in the future, how you can use those with effects and things. But uh, I hope this gave you an idea of how to do the basic setup and some things you can do. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them down below and uh, check out all the other plugins and things at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.